Yeah, so uh, just as you rightly articulated in the uh, hooks that you mentioned in terms of the debt based structuring, um, it is also very important something that uh, we appraise ourselves with the historical uh, background. I mean, in terms of under the Fourth Republic, is it something that uh, we are just seeing it for the first time? Is it something that we've done before? And what were the economic benefits and leverage that came out of this kind of debt restructuring? But then, uh, in terms of the commentary that you've said, I mean, let me just speak briefly to it before I go to uh, the underlying historical antecedents and also uh, delve deeper into uh, the benefits or more or less the leverage and the levers that uh, this district fraction seeks to offer Ghana as a country to chart a new path and then going forward we can look at the things that we can do uh, to also consolidate the gains that uh, we have achieved from uh, structuring this. But, but something is, is, is important to note one thing that as a developing economy like Ghana, a country whereby uh, in most of the cases you have your uh, uh, income, I mean, in terms of domestic revenue, uh, far uh, less than your uh, total expenditure, then uh, you would always incur a deficit. And that is something that I think uh, myself uh, as, an, as an academician have made this point on several platforms that uh, as far as you continue to incur a deficit, uh, you would uh, find ways and means to finance that deficit. And, and obviously, uh, you, you, you can do so by going to your central bank uh, to, to get some kind of uh, financial sustenance there. And if there's some, your central bank, for example, if the BOG uh, does not have the capacity to do that, as we saw in 2012, whereby we had a fiscal deficit of 11.6% of GDP in 2020, whereby because of COVID, we had a fiscal deficit of 10.8% of GDP then the most likelihood is either to go to the domestic market or to go to the uh, uh, international uh, uh, financial market. But we also know that the chances are that if you are borrowing too much from your domestic market, then obviously it also has repercussions by crowding out private sector investment. And for that matter, you wouldn't also want to uh, uh, endanger the private sector and for that matter, private investment, which has the capacity to drive your economy. So then the most uh, ultimatum is for you to go out there and borrow which also, at the end of the day, because of your credit rating, I mean, being a developing country like Ghana, obviously, and coming from Africa, uh, your credit rating going to the same financial market wouldn't be the same as maybe your peers in Europe or in the US, who might get the same access of fund at a very cheaper rate, but you would also be borrowing the same fund at a very exorbitant and higher rate. And in fact, if uh, something your good self, if you've had a chance to read uh, some of the World Bank and IMF publications, one of the things that these publications seek to outline is the fact that um, the cost of accessing finance by developing countries and developing economies, for that matter, African countries, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's outrageous, I mean, compared to their peers from even Eastern Europe or Asia or elsewhere across the globe. So that, that, is, the, that is also the tough reality that uh, we, 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 we are faced uh, to contend with. Then coming back to uh, the core issues itself, something and uh, uh, trying to set the background for this. In 2001, if you quite remember, when President Kofor assumed office where we had a debt to GDP of about 182% of GDP. I mean, one of the things that um, President Kofor's uh, economic management team together with uh, foreign consultants saw was that um, the domestic debt was one of the things that actually was impeding uh, uh, Ghana's progress in terms of financial sustenance and viability. In fact, uh, the, the domestic debt stood at 6.1 trillion, representing about 91 and 182 uh, day treasury bill and one year treasury bill notice only. And that we were paying so much in terms of interest in uh, servicing uh, these debts in twin, and that's actually in 2001. So, one of the things that President Buford thought it wise to do was to restructure these domestic debts. And one of the key things that you saw was whereby we had to go through the process of having the government of Ghana index a link bond, whereby we realized that, look, we cannot be paying an interest rate beyond the actual growth rate of our economy. You can't be paying an interest rate of about 17, 18, 20 percent, whereby your economy is growing at around 3, 4, 5 percent there. But then how do you generate enough to service these flows that are coming in? So if you remember very well, these bonds were indexed, and then it was set at a rate of 5%. That is the growth rate at that time, perceived to be at that time, that we were not going to pay any interest beyond 
this point for the next three years, which gave us that room for the economy to have that fiscal briefing space. So if you take a look at that data at that time, in 2000 and uh, what do you call it, in, in, in the years ahead, that is 2002 and 2003, in 2002 alone, that decision saved Ghana about 187 billion Ghana cities. And in 2003, it saved us 481 billion Ghana cities under that domestic debt restructuring sort of that we did in 2001. Similarly, it was this project that actually helped us to leverage on or serve as a catalyst to have that world development, world developed government bond sector that we have in Ghana today. So something that has been our history and that is where we are coming from. Now coming back to the substantive issue at hand, whereby we are talking about the uh, restructuring of these uh, uh, debt, something. I mean, it has, it has the, 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 the benefits and it also has the other aspects. But I want to focus on the benefits for now, but going ahead in terms of what we can do to make sure that we do not find ourselves in where we find ourselves, again, in somewhere maybe we try to assess the antidotes and then the remedies that uh, we can also prescribe in that matter. And also something, so I would like to look at these death restructuring in two forms. So the first form that I will look at it is the stock treatment. Now, the stock treatment is whereby we have the 37 percent haircut that yeah, Dr. Chiochamp obviously said. And then the flow aspect is whereby we have the interest reduction, whereby we are having an interest of about 5 percent, which is going to give us a savings of about 4 billion. So in terms of the stock, that is the amount of money that we're supposed to pay, including the principal, then the country is earning about $4.7 billion thereabout. But what does this mean, Samson, and how is this even important to uh, the Ghanaian economy and all the ordinary Ghanaian, my mother in the village uh, who elsewhere. How, the, how has it even affected them? Now I want to look at it from an analogy, Samson. Now imagine you have a big credit card bill, Samson, and it can also be interpreted this way. If I owe you money and I come to pay, and you say, no, don't pay, but keep it, then it's certainly it will be interpreted that you have given me money, isn't it? Because at that point in time, I could have invested that money in something else to earn me returns, which I can also use in furtherance of my personal development or my personal growth. And, and for that matter, if we are looking at it as the general economy, then that is something that we can also look at it. Now, on the savings angle, Samson, I would also want us to look at this analogy, Samson. Imagine you have a big credit card and you are struggling to make payments. Then the credit card company comes to you and, and gives you a break that no payments for a while. They say for the next three years, so in the case of Ghana, from 2023 to 2026, that we are not supposed to pay interest on these uh, bills. So you don't have to pay us anything. What does it imply? This simply means that you save the money that you have been paid on interest, which at the time that maybe you may not might have generated enough funds uh, within uh, your economy to, uh, to service this interest. Now, that, making that's, resources... That's like deferred suffering or pain, uh, course, perhaps, yes. perhaps what in Chi, it will be said, is that it? We are just deferring what it, you yeah, suffer. But, 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 but the, 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 you see, the, the most important point here is that if we are taking a look at the 2024 budget statement, which was read, and I think Dr. Chuchan mentioned those figures, and I think what he said was in dollars, but I think they are in Ghana CDC, if I'm right. I mean, I think the total expenditure is about 224 billion Ghana cities, and out of the 224 billion Ghana cities, about 119 uh, billion Ghana cities, uh, which covers both our compensation and interest service. And I think interest service alone is costing us about 55 to 6 billion uh, Ghana cities in that regard. So something, if you have an economy like this, whereby your first two expenditure lines are monies that are going into uh, uh, compensation, let's put compensation as that is another topic for discussion. But then the second leading line of expenditure is interest payments. And if you look at the same budget and you are looking at allocations to MMDAs and all government agencies at an amount of about 38 billion Ghana cities, then you have a problem. So in terms of the amount of money that you are using to service interest alone, it's far greater than the amount of money that you are giving to government or state mandated institutions, then you certainly have a problem. So if this is the case whereby you are being told that look something today, Within the next three years, you can keep this money. You don't need to pay this money swap. Then, obviously, you can rationalize expenditure by investing these sums of money into prudent ventures of their economy. You know that this is a developing economy, and when it comes to infrastructure-wise, when it comes to agriculture and other critical parts of the economy, a lot is required in terms of funding. So if we are having this fiscal room, as I have rightly described it, 
and then we don't need to pay these monies within the next three, then obviously it gives government that of leverage to invest in these critical sectors of the economy, which has more or less come to us. And, and, and we've seen it in various parts mm. of the country where okay. roads were cutted and then they, it had to be paused. So obviously, we cannot downplay the significance or the importance right. that this restructuring brings right. to the economy. Uh, I'm going to ask this question to you and also to Dr. Thierry Champon before I come to the studio. And it's on the back of a statement by Franklin Kujo of Imani, Ghana. And he was responding to what the president said. He said, I told you we knew how to bring the economy back to life. And that's a comment about the economic recovery that we are beginning to see. <clears throat> and frankly, Kujo says, yes, but for how long and at what cost? You literally forcibly pickpocketed our savings after promising not to do so just so you could buy time from external creditors to postpone paying the humongous debts you contracted for mostly vanity projects until 2026, when you are no longer in power. No other Ghanaian leader and African leader in recent times ever invaded citizen savings as a result of supervising wretched microeconomic governance and ecological suicide through Galamse. Not even uh, President Ruto of Kenya, whose country spends a third of their GDP in debt servicing, but still facing turmoil over taxes, ever did this. In fact, all right, so do you understand and appreciate Franklin Kujo, what he says, and he gives an advice to conclude. I've cut part of what he has to say. He says, my advice is simply this. Please invest some of the nearly four billion savings made solely because you wouldn't have to pay debts you scrambled for until 2026 in only growth. Multipliers in only growth multipliers and the rest in a sinking fund to help your innocent successor in case it is not Baumia to breathe a little from what has truly been a fiscally reckless journey. The next IMF visit is imminent unless the next government reduces overall expenditure by at least 40% and embark on freeing the private sector and all individuals from the many vampire taxes and charges. Yes, Doc. Yes. So, uh, so <laughs> He's speaking the reality, is it not? I mean, I mean, I mean, th there are some factual inconsistencies in that statement, and I want to uh, set that premise right. I mean, uh, if, if something, if, if Franklin says that, uh, I mean, the borrowing has been as a result of this government's uh, uh, lack, lack of star management of the economy, that, that, that can be termed as a factual inconsistency. For example, what was our data uh, debt stock in 2008 before the NDC took over? Our data debt stock, in do and I use dollar term because the dollar is the most stable currency in the world, agreed or, 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 or can be disagreed, but that is the reality. Now, in, in 2008, our data debt stock was about $8.07 billion. Now, between 2009 and 2016, our debt stock had actually ballooned from to uh, $8.7 billion to $29.2 billion. And that is an average year-on-year -year increase in terms of the nominal figure of about 261%. Now, currently, in May 2020, uh, 2024, uh, the BAG financial data that was published, and this is a public data that you can or, uh, uh, peruse, what is our total public Our total public does something I think about 51.7 billion USD. So in terms of the year-on-year -year addition from 2017 to today, Nana government had done barely 80% in terms of the cumulative addition of debt stock. I mean, if you are considering the marginal changes from where I am, I mean, so that can never be termed as, uh, 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 I mean, a mismanagement. Yes, uh, it, it's not something that, yes, we should, we should be proud of, but in terms of managing the changes, the actual changes or the growth rate in debt stock. I can say here on authority based on the data that I have spoken to that Nana Kufuado and Dr. Mahmoud Mamiya's government have actually managed the growth rate of debt 
better than any other government under the fourth under the fourth republic, especially if you are gauging the NDC as the alternative in, in managing uh, debt. In fact, Sansa, it is very instructive to know that between 2013 to 2016, we actually had a year-on-year -year growth of uh, between 90.1% in terms of the debt accumulation, just under former President John Dramani Mahama. So obviously, this premise can, can, can never hold any water. Then he also comes to the issue of the sinking fund. I think the sinking fund is something that has been in existence even during the NDC's time. In fact, if Franklin has taken his time to read the annual public debt report, he would get to know that most of the bonds that were uh, subscribed by this government in 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021, part went into the annual budget funding amount. Then the remaining were used to buy back bonds that had been subscribed by previous government. For example, the NDC government subscribed a bond in 2015, which actually matured in 2021. The euro bond that we issued was used to buy back, I think about $800 million was spent to buy back that part of that bond, and the remaining amount went to the sinking fund. So this is something that this government is already doing as established. And okay. like I keep saying, if you read those reports, All they right. are really interested there. But, but that, however, what, yeah. what, I, what I want to touch on is that in terms of the forgiveness, yes, of course, I, I, I don't think it's something that is even new. In fact, the finance minister himself has reiterated this point that he has offered two way solutions out that we create either a sinking fund and then we put these monies in there, or we also invest this money into instruments that will generate enough for what's going into the future if we are supposed to repay this uh, uh, debt that is from 2026 onwards, All then right. we can also have that group to also pay. So these are already... Thank, thank, you, thank you, Frank. Uh,